But look who we have here. We have John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. What are you doing, John? Just back from somewhere. Yeah, you are uh, you are very virtual today. You know, it's good to see you in person again because mm. I know, despite the fact that we see you every couple of weeks on video, if it's celebrating Act Two, you've been doing a lot of traveling and um, Europe, all over Europe. Tell us, give us a quick overview about traveling at this time. You know, I mean, COVID's kind of over with at, at the U.S. airports. I don't have any problem with the security and all that other stuff. We're still taking our shoes off. But tell us about travel to Europe and, and generally what you've been doing and give us kind of an update of what we can expect. It is worse than it has oh. ever been. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I mean, and uh, it has nothing to do with COVID. Co COVID, by the way, as everybody, it's still out there. And both my wife and I came back from Italy. Uh, we, we've been on a ship, which I'll talk about. Um, and both of us had this rotten, rotten cough. And it lasted. And I tested for COVID as soon as I got back. And she did. We were clear. But it persisted. And tested again. And we were negative. But the, her doctor said, well, you probably tested too early or too late. It's that in-between period. But we've beaten it. But we could have had COVID. So it's still out there. And especially if you're um, in close quarters like A, a plane, or B, we were on a ship on a masted schooner in the in the uh, Tyranian Sea. Um, but it's definitely still out there. Um, people aren't wearing masks, and you don't have to anymore prove you could rip up your card and and prove that you don't have it um, because it's a uh, it's for most people it's going to be a rather mild experience. But it is there, and people should be aware of that. And um, both my wife said. This will be a foreseeable future. We are not going on another cruise where she's sitting around at tables and close quarters constantly. And of course, cruises, although this has never happened to us, but cruises, you can get gastrointestinal uh, diseases more easily than you would think. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law, he went on a cruise to Antarctica of all places, and uh, he was waylaid for three or four days with a gastrointestinal um, disease. So it's out there, um, but that's kind of always out there. What's gotten worse is that every single plane is 100% full. Oh, wow. 100% full. And um, forget about Europe. I just, two days ago, I was in San Antonio, and I was going to be flying back on United to Newark uh, on a one o'clock flight, got there. And says up there, postponed till 4.45, five mm. minutes later. He okay, said, oh, brother. Then, bingo, 6.45. Yeah. And I asked the gate agent, is that ever going to take off? He says, well, the plane hasn't taken off for Newark to get here. Oh, jeez. So I'm going to have to spend the night in San Antonio. And they said, well, we don't have any other flights. So I went over to um, Delta, and they had a flight going to JFK. Thank you, Jesus. And fortunately, the ticket had been bought uh, by a, a third party because of was what I was visiting. So he says, that'll be $750 one way to JFK. And I said, $750 one way? He says, yeah, that's wow. what it is. So I said, all right, I got to get that approved. Just hold on. I made a phone call to the guy who would have to approve that amount who said, wow, that's a lot, but okay, got to get home. Uh, the phone call took uh, five to ten minutes. I went back to the um, counter and <clears throat> I said, you still got that seat? It says, yes, now it's twelve hundred dollars. I said, what? What? <laughs> said, oh, How oh my God. could you possibly do that? He says, because when you asked me five minutes ago, we had two seats left. One of those seats was taken, bought while you were on the phone. So now we can, he doesn't say this, now we can gouge you as much as we wish to. And I wow. said, 1200 bucks. I could fly to Italy and back for that. You know, I, I stupid. I should have asked them what would a round trip cost. It probably wouldn't cost as much. Anyway, and then throwing the other half of the ticket away. But, I mean, this is what is obtaining because the airlines have you over a barrel. Every single seat is taken on every single flight because people are traveling 
And of course, the uh, airlines got smart some time ago. They limit the number of flights and the number of seats, of course. So um, they pack them in and they cancel flights, et cetera. Um, so that aspect is as bad as I've ever seen it. <clears throat> uh, getting through security is impossible. They say, you better get to the airport three hours before you really do. Unless in the, in the United States, you have to have to have to have TSA clearance. You've got to get that. Yeah. Fortunately, these days to get that or global entry <clears throat> or a passport could take you six months to a year to get. I mean, this, I just checked my passport. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, been waiting, I've been waiting for six months to get just a renewal of my global entry. Wow. Is that a question, Art? Yeah, uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, uh, I assume that you always have your passport up to date uh, because I know that it, 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 uh, we've heard friends, uh, and obviously you have, a, I think it's a 10 year period because I, I, before COVID, I happened to, just because it was expiring at some point in the near future, I have to renew it. But I heard of people who were waiting months and months and months for uh, passport renewals. Uh, yeah, and also the story that you told uh, um, about COVID, uh, I find that uh, locally here we go. My my wife's gone to concerts, and um, uh, we, we go to uh, uh, gymnastic matches for our granddaughter and baseball games, and nobody's wearing masks anymore. Yeah. And and while we're all uh, boosted up in our circle of uh, in our world with uh you know the the booster shot the booster shot the flu shot and the rsv and all that stuff uh still after three years my wife came down with covid she went to an outdoor concert but she came down with covid and she had a really bad case of it but a relatively mild like a bad flu for several weeks but it's like uh and we actually did a, a piece on this of of uh getting covid after three years of being you know careful and exposed and so on. And then all of a sudden you come down with COVID, but they're mild cases. Have you found people wearing masks in uh, a lot of the destinations you go to? No, no, um, I don't. there are some, but uh, I don't find uh, very much. It's not required anymore. What I did right. as soon as I did get home was to get my flu shot, my COVID shot update and my RSV, whatever right. that is. Um, and I got that also. So I, I, I'm all inoculated at this point and uh, hope it doesn't show up. But I mean, these are the considerations. But to get back, I mean, about the renewal of your passport, uh, that's another thing I did as soon as I got back. I was supposed to go to Europe in January. And I said, hmm, I wonder when my passport is over. Because you have to have it up to date by six months. Do you know that? No. Mm. Six months. I show up in January. You walk in with a, you walk in with a brand new passport it's not good enough no a brand new one is just dandy well if, you know it's, if it's if it's going to expire within six months of your flight wow. you can't get on the plane so you have to so I, I looked and i said i'm safe until 2025 but i'm going to try to renew it now because it could take six months and mm -hmm. the real and this is simply because so many people post covid want to get out there they yeah. will pay anything as i just said about these flights people are paying however much it costs. And as I said, you got to get TSA. A TSA doesn't it only work for the United States to get through a security line, but it does work. And then you've got to, got to get clear, which is not at every single airport. Clear is a phenomenon. Um, it only costs a couple of hundred bucks, but I think you can get your wife or a guest on it also. And I don't know if you've used it, but you go up to the clear lane a person there, an agent, takes you to the, the kiosk, they look, scan your eyes, and they take you by the arm right to the head of the line of security. I mean, it takes 60 seconds. So you got to get clear. Um, yeah. And now that they don't have clear in Europe or outside of the United States, but uh, they have it in San Antonio, they have it in LaGuardia. They have, they have I probably have it every single time I go. There's more and more, um, but that is invaluable. Um, there's also another thing um, called. Uh, I have to get back there. Is another thing, aside from global entry, which takes months and months to get. There's another thing um, that I'm, I'm blanking on. But you can that that also gets you through customs coming back. Um, something like mission, mission um, 
Anyway, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Well, but, we'll, you know, John, we'll look it up and we'll put it in the notes yeah. uh, mm-hmm. below the video so people will know what it is. So for all these reasons, <clears throat> um, travel is more difficult than ever. And now add to that global warming, which, as you know, this summer lasted and lasted and lasted. The whole world is getting damn hotter. When I was in Austria in September, Austria in September should be 70 degrees, 68 degrees. It was 85 degrees for a whole week. Mm. Wow. A month later in Italy, when it should have been in the 70s, it was 85 degrees. I didn't bring enough shirts. I mean, I was... Wow. I was so, this means that, well, oh, it's nicer than it used to be. You used to be able to go to Italy or Europe, any place, anywhere, in, um, in March, April, and you were cool. And it was not going to be busy. Now, forget it. It's April is busy. Wow. October, we, my wife and I were, we could talk about Italy on another show, but my wife and I were at the Trevi Fountain, or <laughs> seemed to get near to the Trevi Fountain. I am not exaggerating when I say they are probably between two and 3,000 people surrounding that fountain. Oh, gee, wow. Talk about tourism. And this, this was the what? end of so was um, that, you said this is the end of October. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, it's just it's worse than ever. Um, should people travel? Well, you know, if you can wait till the heat goes away, which it has now um, to a large extent, but uh, yeah. it, you know, everything has changed uh, because of the global warming. And well, I remember you, you, you were you were telling us about the wine uh, uh, the wine business gravitating north to uh, England. Uh, mm-hmm. Just a, a couple of episodes ago. So uh, this yeah. is a, well, we don't know how permanent it is, but it, it looks like it's a, a trend that's going to last for a while. Then, huh? Well, it's going to be permanent unless we do something about it. I mean, it, it is human beings which are contributing mightily to it. So um, well, nothing so, is done. So, John, um, with the all the airline uh, machinations did you find that the hotels are doing the same thing hotel there's a lot of people traveling yeah. would they up their prices did you get any uh, any Absolutely. bad turns of uh, events there oh uh, they will and they are entitled to get as much as they can and when i was in uh, rome uh i wanted to be center city for various reasons um and the prices there for a good hotel, not the most expensive, was seven, eight hundred bucks. So wow. I found one place that was three hundred and twenty seven bucks. And it was a, I think it was a Hilton or something like that. And three hundred twenty seven bucks is still not cheap. But it was 15, 20 minutes in the center of the city. And the hotel itself was like a higher end motel in the United States. Hmm. So, I mean, they will, you know, Paris is going to have the Olympics, so forget about it. There ain't going to be no cheap Paris oh, place. Yeah. Yeah. B&Bs just go through the roof. B&Bs, which used to be $99 a, a night, are now charging whatever the, they can they can get. Um, yeah, it's it's getting very, very expensive. The one so good- now, do you, do you think this is just the result of inflation, or as you pointed out, more people are going out now because COVID's a thing of the past, they think. Well, it's not inflation when you can raise prices for your hotel room from 150 to 307. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, inflation. that's just taking advantage of what you can do. I mean, you know, that's, that's what free enterprise is about. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, having your experience shared with us is really important for a lot of our viewers. Our crowd, the over 50 crowd, as I like to call us, a lot of us love to travel. You know, that's what we do. You retire, you've got some money, you've got some time. Let's go somewhere, honey. And uh, your your advice is really, your experience is really valuable. Well, thank you. The best advice I can give now is to visit a vanishing species, the travel agent. (laughs) The, the, the travel agent was wiped out because it used to be you go online, you go to Kayak, or you go to Trip, any of these things, and sure. oh, there's a, there's a hotel in Rome for $115. Oh, there's a, you know, if I, if, I, right. if I stop over in London, I can get there for $600. Those days are completely gone. Hmm. Absolutely gone. Um, you know, you see cheap flights fly to Rome for $400. 
Yeah, uh, you have to fly to Helsinki first, and then you got to fly to Brobdingnag, and then uh, and the flight turns out to be literally twenty three hour flight. And yeah, that, you can get there that way. So if you if you still have a travel agent, I don't even know where to look for a travel agent in my own neighborhood. If they still exist, they have information at their fingertips, and they. Yeah with airline or stuff, which uh, probably get your better deal or a deal with um, flight plus hotel plus car. Yeah. Which seem a little expensive, but it's much less cheaper, it really is. Yeah. You know, good, given, good given the situation that we have uh, today that you've been describing, uh, and I know that I have uh, two daughters, uh, particularly one who uh, has to not only do international travel, but a lot of domestic travel as well. Uh, it's getting to be absolutely awful at the airports. And yes, you have all the early check-ons because you're a frequent traveler and you're in a, 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 you know, you're doing it for business, but uh, still get the early flight because that's your best chance to have of not having something else cancel along the way. Uh, and we had in, in, in the States, or I think they probably had in Europe, where planes were being canceled because of heat. They can't, can't take off yeah, uh, too. Or, or land as well. So. Uh, maybe we can do another um, uh, episode sometime in the near future because I, I know you've got some domestic travel that you've been talking about. Uh, maybe alternative places to go. Maybe Europe is not the place to go anymore. Maybe it's had its run and we might begin to think of other destinations that might be friendlier or domestic things. Uh, maybe going to uh, Canada and, and riding the rail uh, across Canada, things like that. So maybe we, we want to begin to rethink some destinations in uh, this new world. Uh, that's pretty much what I've decided to do. Um, I am going, I will go back to Europe, um, but I'm not going to go to the major cities, uh, which are overrun, uh, which we'll talk about when we speak more about Italy, but mm. I am going to go through smaller cities, which are not tourist cities. And um, uh, as I said, I will be going to be talking about San Antonio, Texas. I haven't been there more than 10 years. It is marvelous now. It used to be a really sleepy, Texas town, but it's one of the most culturally progressive, great restaurants, terrific museums. So we'll talk about that at some point. Wow, good. Okay, good. Well, I look forward to those future conversations. They're always a lot of fun. John, thank you so much. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.